Hi there, I'm Scott, the owner of Recreational Motorsports, and we've had a lot of people calling us about the new 200. So what we thought we'd do is give you a tour of the new 200 Yamaha and Arctic Cat. Um, the only difference really between the two sleds is the skis and the windshield besides graphics. Uh, we'll start from the back and work our way around and, and give you a tour. Okay, we're looking at the handlebars of the new 200, and Yamaha Arctic Cat put a little thought into this. The, the 120s always had a problem is they had a real short handlebar steering stem and what that did for the small kid it was fine but for the kids with the longer legs uh, their knees were hitting the handlebars most of the time which they needed to have handlebar risers. Uh, they thought about this a little bit, raised it about three inches and now the need for handlebar risers has kind of went away. If we go down to the seat here, uh, and I'll back up a little way so you can see the whole seat, you'll see a a red line that I put on there, that's the original height of a 120 seat. And you add about four inches to that and this is what you get. Makes it really nice for the taller kid or the younger adult actually. If we go down here to the footrest, the footrest has got some nice big cutouts in it for snow to fall out of and not build up on the running board. You'll see some perforations here which help you catch your boot. It uh, does not have any kind of grip on the outer edge, uh, something you could use maybe in racing purposes. Um, we got a louvered vent here and what that's for is the disc brake which is what we'll get to once we get the hood up. I'm going to move back here to the tunnel. Uh, the tunnel has got an extension on it and the reason for that is is this track on the new 200 is a 90 inch long track versus 68 on the 120. Okay we're going to move down to the track. I've got one taken off a unit here and you'll be able to see and I'm going to try to zoom in a little close. That is a one inch lug profile. As you see there's holes in the center of the track. Uh, helps for snow clean out, weight, Plus, it's also a place for the anti-ratchet driver to go through. Now, keep in mind, this track still drives off the drive lugs, and I'll get sideways here and get kind of in so you can see it. It does drive off the drive lugs, but uh, the center lug itself, it's just designed for an anti-ratchet. You'll notice that every other track's clip's missing as usual. Um, not real advantageous for speed, but... Uh, it's something that they do. It would be a kind of a must for the stock class racer to put all the track clips on if he wants to be competitive. Okay, moving on to the front end. Um, they've changed their spindle configuration. Uh, the spindle has got some spherical bearings in it as you can see and when we go to the front it doesn't have that extended out steering spindle like the old 120's had. Gets rid of a lot of bump steer. It's a nice little setup. The A-arms are kind of nice. It does have a normal yeah, I'm sure it's a gas bag over oil, spring shock, non-rebuildable. Um, not a real expensive shock, but it does do the job. You'll see on the skis, and this is where the difference is. This is a Yamaha ski, the actual Arty Cat ski. It looks more like the original 120 ski. That's really one of the only differences between the sleds. Okay, now I got the hood open here, and I'm going to zoom down in on the disc brake. Uh, 160 millimeter disc brake. It's a wave rotor, uh, hydraulics. Nice little setup, same thing we've been using for quite a few years on the champ sleds and the belt drives. We move over here to the air box. Um, they did their homework, Cat and Yamaha did. Um, this engine's based off a Yamaha MZ200, which is a basic lawnmower OPE engine. The air box is special for this sled. Um, on the dyno, you remove the lid off this air box and it does not make any more performance. So unlike the 120s where you would drill a hole in them or pull the lid off for more airflow, that's not the case. This is perfectly adequate. They did a nice job. They put a nice little frog skin over the intake to keep snow ingestion out. Um, I loosened the bolts already to make this easier here. We'll pull it off. You've got your normal little butterfly carburetor like the 120s, but uh, there again, that's something that they changed. This carburetor is actually bigger than the standard equipment carb that comes on this engine. So bore on the carb, it really isn't advantageous for more horsepower when it's in this stock form. Um, this cam, or this engine has a different camshaft in it. The camshaft itself has got a little more duration and a little more lift. Uh, it's got heavier valve springs in it, so it does allow it to rev a little higher. Um, and it does not float the valves. The springs are adequate for a lot more RPMs. It does have an advanced flywheel on it. The key's not advanced, but the flywheel has a new keyway in it for the advance and it's advanced about five degrees so there again shaving a flywheel key to get more performance isn't really necessary in this engine this engine in stock form made about six horse and in the form it's in now is bumping right on the nine horse door it does have a six thousand rpm rev limiter which is located up front here um, that rev limiter is electronic it does not have a mechanical governor in it 
you're going to see right off the bat, and I'll get my finger here, they got a linkage wire in place of where the spring used to be. I would highly recommend keeping that 6,000 RPM rev limiter in there for durability purposes. We're going to move over to the other side here and show you the clutching, so I'm going to shut you off here for a minute and we'll get back to the other side. Okay, we're here on the left hand side of the sled and you're looking at the primary and the secondary. Secondary looks pretty much, it's got rollers on it, um, pretty much like a normal secondary. On the primary, some of you that uh, have quads or scooters are going to recognize this clutch. Uh, it's basically a roller style clutch. One of the unique things that they did with it, and I'll get down here, is they put a roller bearing in the center so if you get some tight belt deflection, you're not going to get belt squeal. Also assist in a smoother idle. Uh, you'll notice over here they got a nice torque stop on it. Um, that torque stop is there because this engine is mounted on rubber for vibration purposes. So we'll shut you off again and we'll dissect the clutch here. Okay, I got the primary clutch off in front of me here, and we're going to kind of dissect it here so you can see what it's all about. And there again, it is based on a roller style clutch like you'd see on a small ATV or a scooter. Um, we got the cover up front here, which is a steel cover. Uh, the ramp angles actually effectively act like the angles on a normal ramp itself in a normal weight flyweight clutch. Inside, you've got rollers. Um, I've turned this one over the, the side here so you could see it a little easier. Uh, this roller here is just hollow, and that determines its weight. Uh, you see your cover with your different ramp angles underneath. We'll go ahead and flip this cover off here real quick. Flip this over. And as you can see, here's the clutch. And let me see if I can turn it sideways. You see a red bushing there. And if we go to this side, you see a nice wide red bushing. It gives good support to the clutch. So this is going to be a good durable clutch, and it's going to last a while. When we get underneath that, we got our primary spring, which is a normal spring. And there's going to be different springs available for that down the road. And now you're down to your primary shiv. The non-floating style, you can see the bearing in the center there, uh, which basically keeps your belt at tight tensions to keep it from squealing. Okay, now we're getting to the area where I get the most questions asked about on the phone. This is the heart of the drivetrain on the 200. This is an 8mm flat belt drive. It is a 295 gear ratio. It's got a very hefty secondary shaft, as you can see. It's got a nice cast rear sprocket. It puts us at about a 295 gear ratio. Uh, when you're bumping the rev limiter, you're going to be in the high 20s, bumping on that 30 mile an hour range. Um, it takes a little bit to get to. You do have to take and um, remove the side cover here and loosen up some bolts. And you have your cover here and then a footrest to remove. It's not time consuming. Um, and you'll notice on the cover here, it's got a good nice big roller bearing. So it's, it's set up for to last. It's a pretty beefy little thing. But uh, there's no sprockets available for it now. I'm sure maybe in the future there will be, but really there's no necessity for it. And in stock class and improved stock class racing, it's not legal anyway. So there you go. You've got to see the underneath of the hood. You've got to see some of the questions I get asked about. I'm going to shut you off now, and uh, we'll come back here, and we'll tell you about some of the new things that Recreational Motorsports is going to offer. Now let's go over some of the new products that uh, Recreational Motorsports is going to offer. What we're looking at here is the rear shock on the new 200. Um, this is a Fox shock. It has springs and valving set up exclusively for the 200 and it mounts in the stock mounting location. Under ISR rules, this is legal in stock improved stock class. Not stock class, but improved stock class. And it also is going to be excellent for the heavy rider. Uh, we take that along with the combination of a heavier front torsional spring which will be available through us and it'll be a perfect combination for the bigger rider or the improved stock class rider. Another item that Recreational Motorsports will be releasing this year is a new grip for the outer edge of the tunnel. As you can see it's a small grip that bolts on. It's going to come approximately with three pop rivets. It just gives that a little bit of extra boot grip for the guys that are racing or for the riders with the bigger feet. This is available currently and can be shipped uh, as soon as you order. One of our biggest sellers for the 120 sleds, and I know it's going to be a big seller for the 200s this year, is replacement track clips, our new graphite high facts that are impregnated that are set up especially for the 200s, and what we call our fast in a can. Yes, that is a John Deere product. Uh, we don't uh, advertise it as our own. It's something that we actually get through John Deere. And it's a graphite spray. We've tested a bunch of other brands before, but that seems to work the best. This year what we did is we put them all together in a kit to where you can buy all 36 track clips for the new 90 inch track. You can get the graphite high facts and what we call the fast in a can. And you put that on and it's a perfect combination for a good rolling track. 
If you're doing any kind of stock class or improved stock class racing, this is a must. More things that we have is the new CNA Pro Skis. We just finished up the new rubber mounts for the CNA Pro Ski. Uh, it is going to be legal in improved stock class if you're racing. And if you're not racing and want to run the deeper powder with the new 200, especially if you're an adult, this is going to be the hot setup to have. Uh, you'll notice when we go to the other side of the sled here, we're missing an A-arm. Um, what that's all about is we're currently under development and about halfway through our R&D on a new wide front end kit, which will be legal for improved stock class racing and also for the bigger rider. Uh, it is going to have caster and camber adjustment and it will set the ski stance at 34 and a half inches, which is legal for ISR. Another item that's going to be available yet for this year for the 200s from us is the new adjustable main jet. Uh, this sled, like all the other sleds, comes a little bit lean to meet emissions. So if you really want to dial it in, the adjustable main jet is the way to go. This is legal for all racing, just like the 120s. This is one of the most exciting products that we're releasing for the new 200. We've been working with COSO and we're currently under development with, and we have one actually mounted to a sled here. I'm going to back off just a little bit. There's some graphics that will be going on the hood to make it a lot nicer looking, but this gauge has a speedometer function. It has a tachometer function, which can give you peak speed or peak RPM, but really, what really makes it exciting is that this thing can be set up as a timer. Um, you can set the distance that you want and you can set the speed that you want and it will record the time it took you to either get to the speed or the distance, uh, which is a great tuning aid. Um, it's not something you're going to have to have a GPS for. You're not going to have to carry the phone in your pocket um, or buy a high-tech gauge. Um, this gauge should probably be under the $350 range and it's going to have a ton of functions. It'll also have head temperature. Great diagnostic gauge, great for testing. We're really excited about this, and this should be released in late October. Well, we got to go over all the details of the new sled. Hopefully we covered all the bases for everybody and answered most of their questions. Uh, you got to see a lot of the new products we're releasing. Um, there's quite a few more that we are going to release for the 200, so watch our website and uh, keep up with that. We are excited about the 200 racing, uh, especially ISOC. We're the title sponsor with them this year for the 200 class. I think it's going to be on Friday nights at normal national level races. Um, there's just a lot of exciting things happening here at uh, Recreational Motorsports. We're really excited about the 200. It's a good sled for the kids to play on, and I think there's some adults that are going to have fun too. And I think we might even have some products for that down the road. So that being said, thank you for watching our video.